In this video, we'll look at the effective interest rate method for amortization of bond discounts and premium. So the example we'll use here is of a company that issues a 5-year 7% annual coupon bond with the market interest rate at issuance at 8% and we assume that the par value is $10 million. So we will see how the interest expense is calculated using the effective interest rate method which is required under IFRS but for US GAAP this method is preferred. Okay, For US GAAP an alternative is the straight line method but it prefers using the effective interest rate method. Right Now let's look at uh, the calculation of the carrying amount or the carrying value of the bond which is recorded in the balance sheet and the interest expense which is rec uh, recognized in the income statement and the interest payment will be recognized in the cash flow statement. And of course we also have the amortization of discount and premium. Now in this case the market rate at issuance 8% is greater than the annual coupon so we will have a discount bond or we say that the bond will be issued at a discount to the par value of 10 million. So for this uh, example we're going to calculate the initial value or the initial PV of the bond which is also the sales proceeds. So the bond has a tenor of 5 years so that is N. 7% uh, is the coupon rate so the coupon will be 7% times the par value of 10 million so that's 700,000 so that's PMT okay and for the market interest rate issuance is 8% that's IY and par value is 10 million dollars so that is FV okay the future value so now we compute the present value that's 9.6 million okay so the full amount is uh, 9 million six hundred thousand seven hundred and twenty nine dollars Right, so in this case, uh, this is the sales proceeds or the amount that the company will raise okay, from the issuance of these bonds. Okay, of course, here we are ignoring the issuance costs. We'll just look at the, uh, the PV of the bonds cash flows. Right, so that's, that's the sales proceeds here. So that's the amount at the beginning of year one. Okay, so this is what the company will recognize in their liabilities when they issue the bond. Now, uh, next, we are going to calculate the interest expense. So based on the effective interest rate method, the interest expense will be based on the beginning bond payable or the beginning carrying value. So that's uh, 960, uh, uh, 9,600,729. We multiply that by the market rate at issuance, 8%. So we get $768,058.32. So we then minus the interest payment, which is uh, 700,000. Okay, so that gives us the discount amount, okay, which is 68,000. So keep in mind that for a, uh, for a discount bond, okay, it will approach the par value as it approaches the maturity of the bond. Okay, that's the pull to par effect. So the beginning, the carrying value will slowly increase towards $10 million, which is the par value. So what we'll do next is uh, we will add in this amortization amount to the beginning bond payable which is uh, 9,600,729 so we'll get 9.67 uh, million dollars here. Okay and then the ending bonds payable which is in the recorded in the balance sheet okay will be then used to calculate the interest expense for year 2. So we then multiply by 8% again so we get the interest expense for year two, that's 773,503. Okay, then we minus the interest payment that gives you the amortization of discount. Okay, and that's minus 700,000 there. Okay, and then you will add this to the beginning bond payable. So that's plus 9668787.32. So that gives us 9742290.31. Okay. Now, uh, the, the equation that we are using for calculating ending bonds payable is based on this uh, last point here, which is the ending bond payable will be the beginning bond payable plus interest expense minus interest payment. Okay, so that's how we arrive at this number. So if you continue to do this until year five, you will see that the ending bonds payable will be $10 million, which is the par value of the bond.
right? So, uh, of course, uh, doing this uh, repeatedly can be tedious. So there is a shortcut uh, or there's a built-in function in the calculator to compute this. Now, assuming that you have entered all the numbers into the TVM uh, buttons here, so we can then access the amortization schedule. You just have to press second PV. So that goes into the amortization schedule. So let's say, for example, if you're looking at year one, I will set the P1, which is the starting period to one for starting of year one, and P2 will be one as well. So P1 means your starting period, P2 is the ending period. So this is just for the first year, okay? So scroll down, balance here would be the ending bonds payable, which is 9668787.32, as you can see the number here. If I scroll down, you will see the principal amount, which is in this case the, the, uh, the discount of $68,058. If you scroll down again, that will be interest expense. Okay, that's $768,058.32. If you add the interest and the principal amount, you will arrive at the interest payment of 700000 which is our PMT. Now, if you need to then look for the balance at the end of year 2, so you just have to change P1 to 2 and P2 to 2. So this is for year 2, just year 2. So the balance, as you can see, is $9.742 million. The principal, the discount amount is $73,503 and the interest expense is $773,503. Okay, so that this function would be useful. Of course, once you understand how the calculation works, okay, as long as you have gone through it once, then by using the calculator, it makes the computation more efficient. Okay, so we'll continue just to compute uh, the amount, just to show the amount in year three. So for year three, we'll enter this as three. Uh, just to check, balance, 9.82 million, check. Principal, the discount amount is 79,383, check. Interest expense is uh, 779,383.22, check. Okay, so we can just continue to check maybe for year five. Okay, if I check, change this to five, and change this to five. Okay, then just to check the balance, it goes back to par value at the end of year five. Okay, uh, the discount amount 92,592, and the interest expense is 792,592.59. So uh, what we can observe here is that for a discount bond, uh, the interest expense will be greater than the interest payment. Therefore, the and uh, therefore, the difference, which is the discount amount, will be amortized, okay, and it will be added to the carrying value of the bond liability. That's why it keeps adding up until it reaches $10 million at the end. Okay, so interest expense uh, is greater than interest payment for all the periods. Okay, so that's very, a very easy function to use. Now, if you are asked to calculate the interest expense uh, for let's say uh, the first two years, okay, then you can just change P1 to one. So from year one up to the end of year two, so the interest expense will be, if you add up the two number here, this will be $1.54 million. Okay, I can, I can uh, just double check, 7680581.32 plus 7735022.99. So that gives us 1541561.31, okay, which is uh, what we calculated earlier, okay, what, what was computed by the calculator. So you can use the P1 and P2 to determine the period, the starting period and the ending period to determine uh, what the, I mean, to find the number that is required by the question, okay. Uh, for example, uh, if the question says, um, so how much uh, discount has been amortized? Uh, for the first three years, okay, then you can use P1 as 1 and P2 as 3. So when you check the principal amount, so that shows that for the first three years, okay, the discount has been, is $220,945. Okay, you can, you can add it up to check. Uh, if you want to find out what is the interest expense for the last, last two years, which is year 4 and year 5, uh, you can change P1 to 4 and P2 to 5, so that gives you the interest expense for the last two years, 
will be $1.58 million. Okay, so that, that is a very useful function to sum up okay, the, the, the interest and the principal okay, from P1 to P2. Okay, uh, but the balance will always follow the uh, the P2, which is for year five. So the balance will always show uh, the end of year five's balance, right? Now let's look at the next example, which is a premium bond. So now let's say the market interest rate at issuance is 6%. So I will change the market rate to 6%. Okay, before this, we were using 8%, but now I'll change it to 6%. So when the uh, when the coupon rate is greater than the market rate at issuance, we will have a premium bond. So the issuer or the company will issue the bond at a premium. Okay, 10.42 million. So by the end of year five, the carrying value of the bond should drop to $10 million, which is the par value. So again, remember the pull, pull to par effect. So again, uh, I, can, I can move back to the amortization schedule. Okay, let me just uh, change everything back to one. Okay, so for the first year, the balance will be 10.346510. Uh, okay, so that's the ending bond payable. It will actually decrease, as you can see. Okay, the principal amount or the premium in this case uh, is the difference between the interest expense and the interest payment. That is uh, 74,725.82. Uh, interest expense will be lower, 625,274.18. So although the, the bond is issued at a premium, but when you multiply it by the market rate at issuance of 6%, you end up with a interest expense that is lower than the interest payment. So just to illustrate the calculation, 10.421236 million multiplied by 6%, so that gives us uh, 625,274.18. Okay, and then you minus uh, 700,000. So that gives us the premium. Okay, the premium here will be subtracted. So you see the, the negative sign here. So this will be subtracted from the beginning bonds payable. So I will add 10421236.38. Okay, so I get the ending balance 10.346 million. Okay, and then for the following year, you will multiply by 6% again. So that gives you the interest expense for the following year. Year 2, 620,791. Okay, so this is the interest expense recognized in the income statement. Okay, so take note that we don't recognize 700,000. The income statement will recognize the interest expense. Uh, of course, the actual cash payment will be 700,000. Okay, but for effective interest rate method, we have to recognize the interest expense. Right, so just to, uh, just to check the other numbers, let's say if I check for, if you're asked to calculate uh, what is the interest expense for year four, then you will just set P1 to four and P2 to four. So that will give us a balance. Ending balance is 10,094,339.62. Uh, and uh, uh, pr the premium, 88,999,064 and the interest is 611,036 cents. Okay, so that, that verifies the number. Okay, so if you want to find, let's say, the interest expense uh, for the entire five years. Okay, so I can, for example, change this to one and P2 to five. So the, uh, total, the total premium will be 421,236 exactly the difference between the uh, the sales proceeds and the par value okay so that that confirms that that is the premium that we want to amortize nothing wrong there uh, total interest expense if you add up for all the five years will be 3.079 million dollars okay you can try to add it up one by one if you want to check okay but the calculator summarizes uh, all the numbers based on the p1 and p2 value that we have inserted Okay, so that's that's a, a good way to uh, easy way to compute the numbers. Okay, right. Uh, then uh, for this case, let's see. Uh, so as I mentioned earlier, the for a, uh, for a premium bond, the the initial value will be at the premium to par, but the interest expense will be less than the interest payment, and the ending bond payable will slowly decline. Okay, it will decline until it approaches the par value at expiration. 
okay uh, i think that uh, okay just in this case uh this should be a comma here okay this should be a decimal okay um yep so for the final example we will look at a par bond okay where the market rate issuance is uh, seven percent same as the coupon rate so for this case the initial value will also be 10 million this is the sales proceeds so the company can issue the bond at 10 million dollars now for this case uh, the interest expense will be the same as the interest payment so there will be no discount or premium and the ending bonds payable will all be 10 million dollars until the end of year five so just to check that just to check that is correct so if of course if i take uh if I put 7 as IY and compute the PV, that's 10 million. Okay, if I press second PV, okay, for the first year, for the first year, so balance is still 10 million. Principal, okay, discount or premium is zero. And the interest expense is 700,000, which is the same as the interest payment. Okay, and say for maybe year three, just to check for year three, so that's our balance is still 10 million at the end of year three. Principal, the discount or premium amount is zero, and the interest expense is seven hundred thousand. Okay, so that for uh, for a par bond, the interest expense and the interest payment will be the same. Therefore, the discount or premium is zero, and the ending bond payable will always be ten million. Okay, but for the premium bond, the interest expense will be less than the interest payment, and the ending bond payable or the carrying value will decline. Okay, until it approaches the par. For the discount bond, the for the discount bond, the interest expense will be greater than the interest payment. So the ending bond payable balance will increase. Okay, every year until it reaches the par value. Right? So that is the effective interest rate method.